Hey guys, it's Mike from Chess Lifestyle. And yeah, I wanted to make a video uh, today. Um, I, just, I just finished a stream and I realized that actually uh, I've come up with an interesting training method, which I think would probably be quite worthwhile for people to make use of because uh, firstly, it's free to do. And, you know, you don't require any books. You don't require, you know, buying any courses. Um, and it solves basically, you know, one of the hardest aspects of chess to improve at, which is your calculation and visualization skills. Uh, so, you know, Caius, if you're watching this video, then this really will help you out because that's what you were uh, asking me about recently, about how to improve this. Um, so the reason how and why I stumbled upon it was, well, actually, Chessable uh, wasn't working. Uh, I was going to do some woodpecker method and train some tactics. But uh, Chessable, the site was down. So I was thinking, like, what else can I do? And I realized what I could do was uh, I could play some blitz games on Lee Chess. And you'll see at the end of the video, I think actually doing this with rapid games is even better. But OK, blitz games, uh, why not? Um, and... What you'll do is you'll play the Blitz game, uh, but after the Blitz game, you'll run a computer analysis on Leecher. So, so as, as soon as you finish, uh, there will be a button that enables you to, um, a big blue button that will enable you to get this computer analysis of the game. And what you'll do is uh, you'll go through the game, and at any moment where uh, you see a double question mark blunder, or even maybe a mistake, like a question mark, you pause the position, you see the eval, so you get an idea of, like, you know, is there a move here that, like, wins the position or not, and you try and solve it again. And to give an example of this, this was a game I had against uh, FM Stephen Willey, and in this position, uh, this is a Gug and it's modern, uh, Stephen tried this move E6, which I know from my home preparation that this isn't uh, possible here. And the point is that after I take... Uh, there's no real good way of exploiting this. And I'm basically going to put a queen on d6, knight on d7, and make the break e5, which is exactly what I did. Right? So I managed to get in... Uh, okay, in accuracies, you know, we can study this uh, for our interest, but in terms of this exercise that I'm advocating for, like, uh, yeah, we really want to look at the, the big, big uh, mistakes and blunders. So I played e5. Uh, I won a pawn. And, uh, yeah, Stephen hits me with uh, this knight e4. You know, obviously I can't take because of my queen. But I play a very natural move. I play, play the move queen b4. The reason being is because, you know, I renewed a threat on the knight. I have some ideas of, like, maybe some kind of capture. Probably with the bishop is even going to be stronger, right? Because I, I prevent the king from escaping to d2. And my opponent plays knight d3. Now, the fact that Stephen made a double question mark move here and the position has risen to minus five. And my very next move, which was knight c4, uh, is double question mark itself. And, and the eval goes back to zero. So what that means is I have missed a move that was winning, essentially. And given the nature of the position, we know for certain that this move is probably going to be of the tactical nature, right? So what you can do at this moment, by scrolling through carefully in the game, without looking, you know at the right side of the screen and seeing exactly uh, what move uh, you should have played. Because that's, that's the easy thing to do when you're analyzing your game. You just quickly look, oh, I should have done this, right? But in fact, if you just have a look at what you should have played, you miss out on a chance to actually calculate and visualize and try and solve this very position. And the fact that this very position is a, you know, a puzzle, essentially, um, the fact that it actually came from your game means that if you are able to solve this, this is going to uh, be directly relevant to your chess. And uh, this is why, actually, like I was saying uh, at the start of the video, that I think like doing this for rapid, uh, even like maybe some longer rapid time controls on, uh, you know, Lee Chess or Chess.com would, would be great because then you actually have a chance to calculate uh, these tactical combinations uh, that you get in the game. And if you fail during the game, then you have a second chance to actually calculate it after. Whereas, you know, in, in a free zero blitz game, there's not enough time to uh, um, attempt this properly anyway, right? I, I'm basically just playing on intuition, and I don't think knight c4 is such a, such a terrible move to play on intuition. 
But uh, of course, with the time on the clock, then you actually want to be able to sit down and solve it. So I think like, uh, yeah, this method of, of like resolving mistakes in your game. Um, yeah, I think, I think like this, this will work better on games where you've actually had a chance to really try and solve. But if you are, let's say, just playing Blitz and you, you want to improve your calculation visualization, then you can do this anyway, right? This was from a Blitz game. I missed a chance to win. So I would stop and solve this. Now, uh, I've actually already stopped and solved this position, so I'll share with you what conclusions I came to. Uh, but yeah, in, in a position like this, had I had the time on the clock to really think, uh, I'd appreciate the fact that, okay, we're a pawn up. Um, we have, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, pressure on this uh, weak B2 square. Um, so what, uh, okay, and we also need to be aware that, you know, we've got some, some pressure on our king ourselves as well. Uh, but definitely we should be looking at ambitious moves here. So what checks do we have, right? We've got knight d3 check, we've got queen takes b2. Uh, what captures do we have? We've got uh, knight takes uh, c3, knight takes g3. And what threats do we have? Well, knight c4, but we know that didn't work, right? This was, this was only at best a draw. Um, so yeah, we can go through them one by one. And we very quickly see that the queen stack doesn't work, right? The knight can uh, give some double checks somewhere, but uh, the king will just move. And you can give another check, but the king will just move, and then you've got nothing, right? You've lost the queen. Uh, knight d3 uh, is promising in the sense that if queen takes, you've got bishop takes b2 check, king b1, uh, bishop c3, and there's mate. But the problem is, of course, the pawn takes, and the queen uh, laterally defends the b2 pawn. So the checks don't work, and then you come to your capture, and you realize, well, knight takes f3. Well, duh, the bishop and queen now have uh, been revealed. And, of course, you're winning if they take back, right? You've got this bishop takes, and you've got the same motif. Uh, but in the game, I, I didn't see this, right? Like, I, I was... Maybe I should have stopped to think a bit more. Like, you know, as you can see, I have two minutes here. My opponent had less than a minute already. So maybe this would have been, like, if, you know, I was playing... Uh, you know, make, making use of my time management better, I would have, I would have stopped to calculate here. Um... But yeah, when, when you start to calculate a bit more, you, you realize actually, well, knight c3, they don't have to take back. What alternatives do we have? Oh, what about c3? Counterattacking the queen and stopping the checkmate threat. And in this position, um, yeah, it looks like uh, it's a problem. Like, we don't have any uh, safe squad checks. Um, but then you realize, well, actually, by removing the knight, uh, the bishop is loose on uh, g5, and I found this really nice move, uh, queen g4, when I was trying to calculate this. And, and the point is that, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a move that can save both the bishop and also capture the knight at the same time. I mean, probably the best chance is to play like knight takes f5, because, you know, I can't just take back the knight because of checkmate. Uh, but in this position, uh, they take the knight, I can always take uh, the bishop with check. Um, and then, uh, you know, move, move the knight uh, away. So I'm still going to be a piece up. So the point is, yeah, in this position, I had a chance to be a piece up and win. Um, so, okay, not the end of the world, you know, if I miss this in a 3-0 game. But as you can see, this is a perfect opportunity to train my calculation and visualization. And, you know, I don't need to buy some woodpecker method book with a thousand puzzles or, you know, uh, buy or, or like, I don't know, study some visualization course so, I mean like you know the, the exercises are there in your games and Leechers has this tool where you can you can analyze your games and uh, with a click of a button uh, get a computer analysis you get the eval and you can you can stop uh, at different moments to to try and calculate so I think this is going to be a really nice uh, effective strategy like maybe, maybe it needs a bit touching of touching up but in general this is the basic uh, idea and I think it's a good one I think, it's, I think it's a good one to, to try. And what I'm noticing, actually, is uh, there's a button that says learn from your mistakes. Now, it looks like, oh, this is going to finesse it even more. Would you look at that? So we just go one by one through all of our mistakes. I wonder if this is going to... Yeah, it says one out of four. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. Three blunders, one mistake. So basically, learn from your mistakes is going to be every single mistake and every single blunder. And it's just going to ask us to, to go through each one. And you have a click of a button, view the solution. Can you, can you find this move? And here we can play the move, knight f3. So this is even better. Like, you, you don't even have to... Um, 
uh, yeah, scroll, scroll through uh, yourself. You, you can literally just uh, you can literally just do this. And it says good move. Next. Oh, okay. So unfortunately, it doesn't actually force you to find the full line. I guess yeah. Lee just doesn't know exactly how long the line really needs to be. So okay, it's got its limitations. But okay, if you find the first move, that's already um, that's already. Uh, Good, and then maybe you can explore this, explore this further. Apologies for the reconnecting. Yeah, my, my Wi-Fi has been all over the place today. But yeah, that, that, that looks like um, a really nice uh, way to do it. Like, just click this button, learn from your mistakes, and go through each one. So maybe, okay, I have a chess lesson to teach in five minutes, so uh, maybe I won't be able to uh, do all of them. But I think after, after my lesson that I teach, I'm going to come back to this, and I'm just going to reattempt all of these. Like it says, D4 was played, uh, find a better move for black. And just and just actually sit and actually calculate and solve this. And I think if you do this for every single game you play, you're gonna be seriously working on your visualization and calculation skills. And this is probably like the the biggest uh, weakness in people's chess. Like you know, if you don't make any calculation errors, you're gonna be like a few hundred elo stronger for sure. So I think this has potential. And this learn from your mistakes button. Phew, makes it even even cleaner right so so that's just that's just amazing so yeah i i wonder what you guys think about this uh training method i mean i guess it's been around for a while but i've never heard of it as an actual tool to train calculation and visualization like am i missing something obvious here or, or is this just like a really great hack to just having an infinite source of relevant puzzles that you know are actively going to help your chest because you know you know you can solve like all the woodpecker method exercises but most of the games are from world cha well, all of the games are from past world champions and most of the games are therefore like 1e4 games and you've got all these like crazy attacking sacrifice lines that you're probably never going to get if you're not a 1e4 player so you know like they're not exactly relevant in in some ways and actually solving puzzles from your own games this seems like the way to go so uh yeah i'm gonna give this a shot uh and yeah do let me know in the comments if you give this a try and feel like it improves your calculation uh, would be very curious to hear. Well, on that note, uh, yeah, I might even get a chance. I've got a few minutes. Maybe I'll try to solve these now. And yeah, see you guys in another video sometime. Okay, bye.